With the Linux system's domain joined, we can use Active Directory groups to control SSH access and grant sudo rights. By default, practically any user, domain or local, can SSH into a Linux system that is running OpenSSH server. However, using AD groups, we can limit which domain users can remotely log in via SSH. And by extension, we can limit who has sudo privileges based on AD group memberships. To use AD groups, we have to create the groups. We'll demonstrate using Active Directory Users and Computers, Active Directory Administrative Center, and PowerShell. At an administrative workstation or server, open Active Directory Users and Computers. I know you're not logging into the domain controller directly. Right click the domain, New, Organizational Unit. Create a new OU named Groups. Under Groups OU, create new security groups. Right click Groups, New, Group. Provide a group name. Click the Universal Radio button under Group Scope. Leave the Security Radio button checked under Group Type and click OK. Open the group, select the Members tab, and add domain members. Using Active Directory Administrative Center with the Tree View enabled, expand the domain, right click Groups, New, Group. Provide a group name. Click the Universal Radio button, click the Members section, and add domain members. Click OK when completed. Open an elevated or administrative PowerShell session and define a variable for the group name. Use the new AD group commandlet to create a new group. Add members using the add AD group member commandlet. Since we're creating groups to be used by Linux systems, it's probably best to ensure there are no spaces in the group names. Use an underscore in place of a space where possible. Before we make any modifications, we want to check the group memberships while logged into a Linux system. Log in using either SSH or physically at the console using a domain account. Once logged in at a terminal, Type ID. This will display the user's group memberships. Note that the groups with mixed capitalization, such as domain users, are listed in lowercase, and this is important. Also note that 80 groups are listed using the user principal name convention. Now that we know the group names are recognized in Linux, we can limit SSH access based on group memberships. We have two methods to achieve this. One is to modify the sshd underscore config file located in the Etsy SSH folder. The other recommended method is to add a file in the Etsy SSH SSHD underscore config.d folder. First, take a look at the SSHD underscore config file. If it has the include statement as shown, we can use the recommended method. There are four directives we can use. Deny users, allow users, deny groups, and allow groups. For this demonstration, we will only be interested in the allow groups directive since its usage implicitly denies other users. Using an account with pseudo privileges or as the root user, Create a new file under the Etsy SSH SSHD underscore config.d folder. The file name is arbitrary. You can use whatever you like, provided it ends with .conf. Add the allow groups line specifying the group with the domain name. To add multiple groups, separate with a space. The group name must be listed in lowercase as shown with the ID command. If the ID command 
shows the group without a domain, as may be the case with SUSE Linux, then add the group as shown by the command. Following any changes or modifications, we must reload the SSH or SSHD service. To demonstrate, we have the following users. Mr. Linux is a member of the Linux underscore allow underscore SSH AD group. He can SSH into all Linux systems, Ubuntu, Red Hat, and SUSE. Miss Ubuntu is a member of the Lin24 underscore allow underscore SSH AD group. She can only SSH into the Ubuntu system. When attempting to SSH into the others, she gets a permission denied. Mr. Mad Red Header is a member of the Lin95 underscore allow underscore SSH AD group. He can only SSH into the Red Hat system. Attempts to SSH into other systems result in the permission denied. Miss X Wing is a member of both the Lin15 underscore allow SSH and the Lin24 underscore allow SSH AD groups. She can SSH into both the Ubuntu and SUSE systems, but an attempt to SSH into the Red Hat system fails. As with SSH access, we can granularly grant sudo writes to domain users via Active Directory groups so the process is similar. For modern Linux distributions, we'll add a file to the Etsy sudoers.d folder since the sudo package includes the include directive. Using an account with sudo privileges or as the root user using the sudo, create a file and add the following line identifying your group and domain name. Enter the group name as shown with the id command. Be sure to save the file when exiting. To specify multiple groups, place each group on a separate line or create a new sudoers file. If the group name has a space in it, such as domain admins, you must escape the space with a backslash. The sudo on Debian and Ubuntu use nano to edit the sudoers file. For sudo on Red Hat and SUSE, use VI. For this demonstration, we will employ a separation of duties concept. Remember, Mr. Linux is a member of the Linux underscore allow underscore SSH AD group, and he can remotely SSH into all Linux systems. Mr. Linux's secondary administrator account, who is a member of the Lin15 underscore allow underscore sudo AD group cannot SSH into any Linux systems, but the account has sudo rights. Invoke a SSH session into a Linux system using the regular account. Switch user by using the su command. Elevate a command using sudo. Although the secondary administrative account cannot remotely SSH into a system, the account can log in via the console, which is what the switch user command accomplishes. In some rare cases, the id command may not accurately reflect current AD group membership information. To resolve, you may need to purge the SSSD system security services daemon cache. In a terminal session, as a user with pseudo privileges or as the root user, stop the SSSD service. Clear the cache files using the SSS underscore cache command. Optionally, remove stale database files. Start the SSSD service. Now, user logins or lookups will query the identity provider, Active Directory, and then cache locally to increase performance and allow offline authentication. I hope you enjoyed this video 
learned something new and found it useful. If you have any feedback, corrections, or suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, and pass it on to others. And I thank you for watching.